Jay Sano without intro music. Jay Sano with intro music. Intro music remix. Welcome back, Welcome. everybody. Welcome back. I'm in the no, ocean. Nice. Still in the ocean. I'm looking Still for a big enough landmass that to build a portal on, but this is kind of ridiculous. What are you doing out there, anyway? <laughs> well, we one of the things we don't have around us anywhere is we don't have uh, like a desert or anything, so we're very limited on sand. Mm -hmm. And I've traveled for like thousands of blocks around in a so like probably a thousand blocks out and pretty much around in a circle, and there isn't one around. So I was gonna go try to make a relatively easy access to something by going through the nether. But so far, it has got me nothing but lost. Uh, right before we start recording, you mentioned Seinfeld, and I wanted to ask, what did you check out this new Netflix? I did. Uh, I didn't like it. I so, okay. Well, I liked it. Yeah, so I'm yeah. I liked it only because it was it was Jerry Seinfeld. But it was a lot. I'd say like fifty to sixty percent of the material was stuff that I've heard before. Um, right. So well, it didn't really. I mean, it didn't really do it for me. But I mean, uh, anytime Jerry gets on stage, it's, it's a good time. Was it just stand up or was it like a series? Just stand up. It was stand up. You ever seen him live? I've never seen him live. I really, really want to, though. So I went to uh, one of his shows, and it was like it had like two showings on the day. And so I looked like a dumbass, thought maybe there'd be different material. Between <laughs> so you went shows. to both showings? I went to both shows. And you saw the exact did, same did, thing? Did you it laugh? It was pretty much exactly the same. Did you laugh the same way? I mean, I don't think so. I feel like I'd been spoiled, you know? It was funnier the second time. <laughs> That'd have been great uh, if you were like in the front row and he was like, wait a minute. <laughs> what are you doing here? Do you guys uh have a have a, a a jungle nearby by any chance? Or a swamp nearby? Uh, I don't think so. I I think I've come across swamps, but I couldn't tell you which if you direction. come up, if you come across jungles or or if you come across vines in your many many travels, could you grab a couple for me? Uh, I will. Yeah, I will see. I just if, came to a village. You have some shears. A village. Uh, I have a some village. iron. Yeah, I came a to village? a village. The Villaggio. It's, oh, that's a perfect name for that village. It's, it's like the Villaggio. <laughs> Villaggio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are more books here, though. Books are good. I'm gonna. I thought uh, Chappelle's Netflix series, on the other hand, was really good. Yes, I agree. That was very, very good. I like that a lot. You could tell the material was dated, though. Really? I guess I didn't notice that. Yeah, he had he had done that. He was talking about stuff that had happened quite a long time ago. Um, so I think it was a little bit dated, but other than that, it was it was good stuff. It was funny. Like I, I laughed a lot. I watched that um, whenever I got stuck in San Francisco. Whenever we went on that trip for Microsoft, and I got stuck mm -hmm. in the hotel for an extra yeah. day. Yeah, Just sat in the hotel and watched that. What Real the sad. Heck is going on here? I went to uh, a local comedy show when I was back in Michigan a couple weekends ago. Um, like one of those free comedies that's you know really hit or miss. And uh, yeah, they had uh, they had a couple guy. One guy was really pretty terrible, but whatever, you know, it's free comedy. You know, there was only like ten or fifteen of us in the audience, even like it was insult to injury oh, wow. for somebody who traveled, you know, to to be a comic. He traveled from Chicago, so I felt bad for the guy. But the last guy I thought was pretty good, but my sister was there and got offended. Oh, and something know. it's something like stupid and my sister is one of those extremely opinionated uh people and to the point where we were drinking a lot that night too and the point where like she was interrupting the show to oh, God. try to tell me like we were sitting like the front table that was there because there was only 10 or 15 people there and she was like jeff can you believe he's saying this like he doesn't even understand why i'm upset right now <laughs> like, oh my like, god oh jeez oh man yeah <laughs> watching uh comedy shows with people like that is oh, the most fun it was a little bit embarrassing for sure because <laughs> he, 
he clearly hurt us. And I was laughing. I thought the guy was hilarious. Like, it, it was something, like, really stupid about the state police force in Michigan. Like, he was a state cop. And uh, my dad was also a state cop. And he said something that really offended her about state policemen. <laughs> which I was just like, Brooke, this is a comedy act. Like, you know, like, let it go. He's just having fun with everything. Well, he doesn't <laughs> understand, like, what dad had to go through. And I was like, well, dad, how do you know what he had to go through? Like, <laughs> we were like five. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was a little bit embarrassing. Did she talk to him after the show? No, she wouldn't talk to him after the show. But I think, like, she was also drunk to the point, like, and I'm not saying she was, like, falling all over herself. We were just drinking a lot. And she's, like I said, opinionated anyway. Uh, in gen- I love my sister, you know, but she's an opinionated person. And she, I don't think, thought she was being loud. So I think, like, in her mind, she was all <laughs> slyly, like, telling me all this stuff and wondering why not only the guy, but also my friend that was there with us was like, dude, like, what's going on with your sister right now? <laughs> you know, like, you know? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it was, uh, it was... I'll say I've been to a lot of comedy shows in my day, and I've seen the people there that are heckling, and I always get really mad at hecklers because um, unless the, if the comedian can strike back at them and it all turns into a good laugh, like it's okay, but that doesn't always happen. Uh, but I, I've never been uh, like with the party who was that person. Yeah, that's got to be frustrating. Mm-hmm. How did you know he could hear you? Was he like keeping an eye yeah, on her he after every joke literally, he told? He was literally four feet from us. <laughs> like it, it was one of those ones. It's like it was a bar that had free comedy, um, and it was really oh, strange. So it was, it was the you, it was the night of the University of Michigan Michigan State University college football game, and it was a night game. So it started at seven thirty. We actually had gone to the bar to watch the football game, and in Michigan, that's like that. You know, those games are a big deal. Um, obviously nobody else really cares that Michigan, Michigan state who, who, who cares about that. But in Michigan, the game's a big deal. And we went to watch the game and they coincidentally, they started the comedy show and this was the plan for the bar apparently at halftime. So Mm -hmm. we watched half the game and then all of a sudden there's this like, okay, everybody, we're going to turn the TVs down so the comedy show can get started. (laughs) It's like, um, wait, and then they they didn't go back to the game. They they kept the game on. They didn't turn it off, but they turned the volume off to it. So you no longer could listen oh, to the game. It was just on so and there. It was dumb. <laughs> it was very strange. But we were like, hell, there's only like 15 of us in this entire bar. Um, you know, let, let's check out this comedy, see how it is. We're not going to go anywhere else right now either, you know, because we're just doing it. was a bar that's down the street from my parents' house, um, which there's not much in my parents' little town. So holy shit. I just made another portal to come back to see where we're at it coincidentally created itself in another nether fortress in the nether wow wow yeah that's kind of strange but um we so uh, so the comedy itself is already in a very bad time frame in a very bad place and we were sitting at one of the four tables that was in this room and then there was a couple booths on the side but most of them were empty i think one of them had two workers were sitting at it so people who worked at the bar not anybody you know that was actually a patron and we were sitting at this table that was like a six seater or an eight seater and there was only four of us so they actually put other people at our table with us even though there was a whole empty table behind us, it was it was really strange. The people that were there were really funny, but we could tell because he was literally there was no stage. It was just a flat ground. He's on the same level ground, and he would walk up to our table with the microphone and stand at the edge <laughs> of it and like talk directly to me for a minute. Oh, what do you do, sir? Blah blah blah, and then like take four steps backwards and be on his you know stage that he was performing on. So I'm not, I, I'm pretty convinced he heard us. <laughs> Uh, she didn't realize? Like, how could she not realize? I, she was drunk. She either didn't realize or didn't care. I guess I'm going under the hope that she just didn't realize. Because, mm. like I said, she's opinionated, but really, she can't be that, right? <laughs> that would just be... That would just be terrible. You are, uh, you are not in the nether, are you? Are you in the nether? I am in the nether. Oh, okay. Oh. I-, I can sleep. I actually think I might be back at that same fortress, just a different part of it. Which trying is to get to the bed? Weird. Oh no! Now I can't sprint. This is the slowest trip back to the bed ever. Do you need food? No, I'm good. I, I got a bunch of food. I just don't want to take the time to eat it. 
Uh, and I'm in. Dude, can you go into our portal when you get a chance and tell me what the cords of it are? Like, we're yeah. in the nether, because I want to see if I can dig my way back from here. Because I did find some relatively decent land here. Oh, I guess I should see if this portal actually takes me back to that place, though. Okay. Um, We are at 235, negative 412. And the Y is 113. So, Beef, how was your travel back from the marathon? It was uh, it was good. Nah, no complaints. It was uh, smooth sailing. No delays. No nothing. Every time I go on one of these things and there's a connecting flight, I'd say the odds are about, in my experience, about fifty percent that one of the flights gets delayed and I miss my connecting flight. It gets delayed. Really? Like yeah, it's happened so many times and it's so frustrating. Huh? How? But nothing happened this time. How long of delays do you normally have? Um, it, it isn't too long. So what happens is because I guess the people setting these things up, they don't want me to like be, they don't want the layover, layover to be too long. So it's usually like an hour. Um, but if the flight's delayed by like half an hour, 45 minutes, it's already really cutting it close. Cause I got to land. I got to find the place. Um, and in some cases like, like, uh, like Chicago, that, that airport is enormous. Um, so it's kind of difficult to traverse. And then you have but, to go into an international terminal, right? Uh, no. No? No. Usually, they make it so that the uh, terminal is in the... It's the same terminal, actually. The connecting flight. I don't know how they do that, because I, I that's what I always thought. Like, I'd have to go to international, but it's never worked out that way. I think you just got lucky. Because <laughs> I would think Maybe. you would have to go to international. Yeah. It could be. I hate half an hour layovers and it's only not because I hate the layover itself because I love a shortest layover as possible that I make my flight in. But I'm always just I'm just so nervous the whole time that I'm never going to make it. Hmm. I always try to go for the shortest layover. Yeah. When I look at things like a half an hour, I'm like, no, nah, I'll take the hour one. Just to, Yeah, just no, to half sure. an hour is, is just way too close. I guess it depends on the airport, too. Like, I really love Detroit. It's my favorite airport. Really? For, for connecting for connecting flights. Is it your favorite city too? No. I've never actually been outside the airport. You're I've missing, been to Detroit. You're missing out um, man. the city and uh <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you should love it. It's hockey town, man. It is hockey town, hockey but town. it's uh it can get a little uh I don't know. It's it's not the most for maybe it's just the area. I went to school in uh in windsor for my first year of university university of windsor and that's right across so you uh, went the to mini, mini detroit mini detroit yeah and so um i spent a little bit of time in detroit and it was not a nice place i, I can <laughs> say like i feel bad saying it because i'm sure there's plenty of people that live in the detroit and it's perfectly well, yeah, fine for them detroit, right well i'm from flint but i spent a lot of time in detroit for sure yeah and he likes that was... the football team the like, lions yeah, man Detroit Lions. <laughs> I like how with all the pizzazz I was wearing uh, at the marathon, you were still like that team, like what, whoever they are. I that was the joke. I said the cats or whatever they are. Oh, I, was, yeah, oh, I thought you said, uh, "I got you, I got you." <laughs> uh, no, I've known you long enough to do all of your lion flair. <laughs> Gotta make it exciting, man. Got a... You're like me at medieval times, basically. <laughs> yeah, but that uses a much stranger like thing to be I so disagree. passionate about. I think they're, I think I they're want very you, similar, actually. Next, next year at the marathon, I want you to wear like a medieval times shirt and like scarf and hat and just be like the medieval times guy. <laughs> that see that that would be weird. It's not like they're on TV and the medieval times game is on. Oh, why don't you incorporate that in the marathon? Get some horses. We'll do some jousting, like some real jousting. You know, I contacted them um, many years ago after one of our parties and asked about renting out in medieval times and to see like what would be involved in like us being part of the show and stuff. And they actually that is a possibility. I really wanted to make it happen, but then they never went back to a spot where medieval times was at, so I never could make it happen. But I really wanted one of the Minecraft parties to be at Medieval Times. What is it about the Medieval Times that you you like so much? Because I thought it was it was an interesting experience, 
But I'm like, now that I've done it, I'm like, that's all I'd pretty much do. Because after a while, I was getting a little bored in there anyway. Because the show you got bored the, at what point? The, the storyline was so ridiculous. Like the stuff they did at the beginning, which was like them legitimately trying to, you know, joust these little rings on the wall. I thought that was kind of cool, but it really was meaningless because it was just, there's just a storyline that they were completely based off of, and then they started fighting for the fair maiden, and I was like, okay, this is. <laughs> okay, this is where they lose me. Yeah, this is this is where I'm gone. G- give me some more of that beer that that guy just wouldn't come back around. <laughs> well, you got uh, like two refills while I was still waiting to get him to give me the first one. Well, I um, I got you're, you're my no, you're an elite ahead member ahead at Medieval Times. I get it. I <laughs> no, get it. no, I bought all our tickets, so it wasn't like we were in different seating or whatever. Yeah. No, but like, remember, remember my giant, my giant glass that I got. Yeah. Like, I, I, yeah. I, it's like, it's like, it's like tailgating. You got a pre, you got to get pre, what's it called? Pre, pre, pre game. Pre, yeah, yeah, pre game. I, I was pre gaming with you too. I was out in the. Uh... Oh yeah, but you drink beer. It takes way more to pregame. Yeah, but it, would, it, it takes way more to pregame when they're not giving me more beers. Well, that was a bit weird. I've never had that happen before, where it was hard to get the the server to to to, to get because I mean that's how they make their money, right? Um, yeah, that's where I'll rate a restaurant. So, if you won't refill my beer, low rating. Yeah, that that was a bit weird. I'll give you that, but. I mean, this, the show though. I don't know what you don't like about the show. You got, you just you got you, you know what it is you didn't embrace it. You got to embrace it. You got to get the uh, little flag yeah, out. And you what gotta do you mean? It. I didn't. I wish we had video of that show. I for the longest time was the only one at our table who was like jumping up and going, "Yeah, Yellow Knight!" Like oh. the whole time. Because okay, I, I didn't was, know that. I just assumed you didn't embrace it. No, I, <laughs> like, I, was, try, I was trying to embrace, but then I was just like, "Okay, I'm sick of yelling for this Yellow Knight guy." Like, <sighs> well. He didn't make know. a connection with me. Like we didn't have the thing. Mm. Yeah, maybe that's maybe maybe yeah. That happens. It's like first date. Yeah, he just he didn't buy me flowers, no chocolates. That's one thing they don't do, and it bothers me. That is they buy always you flowers give... and chocolates. Yeah. Well, they basically <laughs> do that, right? They give they give a girl in the crowd. Um, you know, <laughs> good wants the flowers the girl in the crowd that gets the flowers and chocolate. Well, I mean, honestly, Beef, who doesn't want I to be that girl? Right. I want to get the girl. flowers. I mean, <laughs> I would take the flowers. If they offered me the flowers, I, would, I wouldn't I would turn them down. I wouldn't be like, no, I'm not taking your flower. So I'm going to tell you guys something that's going to blow your minds. You are you were a former night rider in Medieval, medieval Nights. Medieval Nights? Is that a new place? <laughs> it's a new, <laughs> it's, it's medieval Times. Yeah. You were um, a former timekeeper never... at Medieval Nights. <laughs> I've never been. There's one in Canada. That's the only one I've never been to. <laughs> There's one in Canada. Really? You've been to all of them except the one in Canada? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah, I really want to go. I hear good things. I hear it's a fun time, but I, I don't know. I've never, I never had the opportunity. It's, it's a medieval time. <laughs> <laughs> so what were you going to tell us? That's what I was gonna tell you. I thought you guys would be surprised. Oh, that you've never been? I've, yeah, I, beef. I've no, only, only uh, I've only been to one, and it was with Good. It there's, was with there's the, very few locations. Like there's, they're not like it's not like they're like everywhere, like Applebee's or something. <laughs> one medieval times on every corner. <laughs> Stop in for happy hour. Catch a mini, mm. a, a pony show. I feel like there should be more, honestly. But there's because there's, it's that good. It is. Oh, it was it's the not... best dinner and show thing. I've done all of them that I know of, and it was um, not expensive for like the dinner show entrance. I will admit that it was what, like fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah, that is not expensive for dinner and a show by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and it's not bad food. I mean, it's not like a five star meal or anything, but it's you know it's tasty chicken. That's that's all a man asks for, really, is tasty yeah. chicken. So I I think <laughs> that chicken came from a uh, a pond, though. <laughs> no, it was not duck. It could have been duck. <laughs> oh, God, I only got. You should chicken. go, babe. I think it's near you, even at the one in Canada. It's in Vancouver. Oh wait, no, you're not near Vancouver. That's nowhere near no, me. No, no way. It's in Ontario. It's Ontario. Oh, is it? Okay. I'm pretty sure. I wish there was one a little bit closer to me. I feel like that would be the perfect date location. (laughs) Um, Oh, I laughed. You were serious. Oh, it would be great. First date. Medieval times. I mean, I guess 
I guess it might be a decent date location, but I can also imagine girls being like, this is like the cheapest like high school type of date location. Think so. I I can definitely picture that, sure. I don't know a lot about dating, so maybe you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, I've had my fair share of, you know, taking women to places that weren't really good dates. I'll tell you, you know what one place is like a really terrible first date? It's so much fun, but it's such a terrible first date. Um, it's like Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a restaurant though you just basically yeah, said taking someone to a restaurant what is is that like an experience for you n- no <laughs> but it, it's, a, it's a terrible thing well especially if you're taking a girl who likes sports it's a place to go watch like a lot of sports and you know you drink beers and have a good time it used to be like a good hangout spot for a lot of people um including women and but i i learned that if you take women there even if they love buffalo wild wings when they watch me eat those types of wings like <laughs> It, it, <laughs> no, man, they, they're kind of like, well, <laughs> that was fun. Thanks, I a lot. So, what's the uh, what's the biggest words. chance you ever took on a first date? The biggest chance like I ever took on taking a first taking date. a chance, like taking someone somewhere, but being a little bit unsure. Because for me personally, I actually went to the very first date. I'd never been with this person face to face. We just talked. We just texted. Really, we hadn't even talked. And I took her to a baseball game and that is four hours um with God, the person that you have are boring as shit too yes uh but i took the chance i mean she was nice enough so it actually wasn't too bad uh we didn't really see each other too much after that but <laughs> so it, it wasn't too good either it, it didn't turn out it, you guys weren't enemies that wanted to leave early <laughs> exactly um but yeah like have you ever done <laughs> Because looking back at it, I can see that that might have been a huge mistake. Yeah, I can see that. The It was like the third Ju- Julia, my wife, and I had gone on like three dates and hung out a little bit. And I invited her to a wedding in Michigan for the weekend. Oh, God. Wow. wow. How many dates was that? In? After like three. We'd only been dating a very, very, very short period of time. Uh, and like, I don't know, like, physically like gone out with each other about three times. Uh, when I invited her, and then it was that next weekend. So then I think we went out like once in between then, and then went on that. That was definitely a chance because yeah, that's we we, we drove. So we drove from oh, DC God. to, and it was in northern Michigan. So it was about a sixteen-hour drive, and. We drove, went to this wedding, and then we drove down the coast and went to my parents' lake house that's over there for a couple extra days and then drove all the way back. Wow, so it was like a full-on vacation. Yeah, yeah, and we're now married, so that yeah. one worked so out. So it worked out. That one worked out. Um, yeah. I more of have those experiences on dates that I didn't see at the time because I used to be this guy who just, I always assume no matter how well a date is going that I, something's like not going well. Uh, I'm like, ah, oh, she's not into this. Like, no matter how much she's like, Jeff, I'm really into this. You know, I'll be, I'll, I'll be like, I don't know if she's really into this. And I've definitely Is this looked, what it's like in bed. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe. <No. laughs> uh, but and I'll look back on a date like a couple days later. My buddies will be like, Hey, man, how did how that date go? And I'll be like, I don't know. I don't think she was like really into this. And I'll start explaining like things that happened to him, and they'll be like. Jeff, she basically was saying, take me home and F me tonight. And you were like, good night. See you later. Here's a handshake. You know, <laughs> she, she thinks you're not interested because of the, you know, the way you said goodbye, because you didn't think she was interested. And she really, really wanted it. That I've had that experience before where where people where a girl will think I'm not interested. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there like I'm sitting there thinking I'm being like too uh obvious that i'm interested and they're, just, they're like oh this guy's obviously not interested and then they'll tell me afterwards like oh, i didn't really think you were interested in me and meanwhile i was like jumping for joy inside yep <laughs> yep it is de- it's definitely the worst when you find that out when it's too late after the fact because you run into that person again because you randomly see them somewhere and you're like oh yeah like, let's talk for a while and you know then then it comes up like oh you know I didn't think you were ever interested in me, so that's why we didn't talk anymore. And you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm, uh, it's exciting. I'm battling. 
I'm paddling. What's that? It's exciting. Uh, yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's funny because I always wanted to be the nice guy, and that's why I never like because girls don't really want the nice guy. I'm not saying that they want the asshole either because that's like a yeah, big joke. Like girls just want assholes. Be that no, but you just gotta be forward. Like that's the thing is you have to be forward enough. You can't just be the guy, nice guy, and try to let them make the moves to so you don't make them feel uncomfortable type of deal. Yeah, you gotta let them know that you like them, right? Right. Yeah, I'm not saying to make them feel uncomfortable. I'm just saying <laughs> just make, them. make them feel uncomfortable. That's how you get the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> then they're too scared to leave, and and then that's the battle's over. You've won. <laughs> uh, just go on the first date wearing my bear suit. <laughs> that you know what? That would be very entertaining for sure. You have a you have a bear suit. I have a bear suit. I uh, you, you know I that's the it. that's the name for. Big gay guys who are hairy. It's- <laughs> it is. It is. It is the, that too, which I fit in that category. Well, I'm not. Well, anyway. <laughs> so um, good. <laughs> learning new things about you every day. <laughs> this is a beautiful hole you have, Beef. <laughs> well, that also goes along with that comment. <laughs> this well. all is so very connected. <laughs> uh, you've done real well. So. Thanks. I'm just trying to make it look like a little bit of a cave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it wasn't in its final form. <laughs> in, in its defense, at least. Like, we weren't done with it. But I'm glad you... I was you... just laughing because of all the innuendo <laughs> that's happening so, right it's now. So good. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, but no, yeah, I bought a bear suit for um, Streebs. Uh, I, I kept trying to get Justin to go to Build-A-Bear with me. And, um, <laughs> and I streamed with him a lot. And then uh, we played Fullcraft, and I, I was a polar bear as as my persona. Mm hmm. Um, and so it became like this thing. And then so I did this sellout stream and everyone wanted me to buy that. I told them they could pick something that I had to buy on Amazon with part of the funds from the sellout stream. And they picked a bear suit. And so I bought a bear suit. In fact, at, during the marathon, I said if I won sliced, I would do a stream where I wore the bear suit the entire time. I just did that last night. Nice. Good for you. How long was the Three whole time? Uh, three hours it was so hot and i like so normally when i put the bear suit on because like i have like a little donation goal if i hit the little goal and, and i like how this dude. this bear suit has a normally when i put this thing on <laughs> <laughs> yeah normally i only wear it for an hour that's my normally my bear suit limit um because it's hot it's real hot and i'll leave my clothes Every, on normally. everybody's got to have a bear suit limit good i understand <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I normally leave my clothes on when I put it on, uh, cause yeah, I don't know, it's just, 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 cause it's kind of itchy and stuff. Um, but, uh, last night since I was doing three hours, I decided I just probably take my clothes off before I got in the bear suit. Um, cause I don't want to be real hot the whole time. Um, and so since I did that, like normally when I zip it up in the back, I don't zip it all the way cause I got a shirt on underneath, whatever. But this time since I, I was three hours, I, and shirtless, I zipped it up all the way, which is pretty hard to do. And then after the stream was over, it took me like 40 minutes to get out of the bear suit because I couldn't get the zipper to come down. And I was so hot and sweating and like just trying. I, it was like one of those moments where I was like, what do I do? Do I just go to the emergency room and be like, I need help out of this bear suit? <laughs> it was an emergency, man. <sighs> so, yeah. what, no, <laughs> would you have gone to the emergency room driving yourself before you would have called 911 to see if they could come get you out of the bear suit? Well, yeah, because they would charge if they came out, don't they? Uh, we're in America. You'd get charged for going to the emergency room. <laughs> and I ain't Canada. Well, I, you know, I, I guess I could just go to, like, a convenience store. That's convenient, right? And just be like, hey. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm naked underneath. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd help a man out of a bear suit if he showed up and you worked at the convenience store, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, <laughs> I take pictures and tell all my friends. What, what Y did you say our portal was at? Oh my god! What'd you say? What Y? How high was it? I finally oh, portal in the Nether. Yeah, I finally traversed my way all the way back. It was uh, one thirty-one. One thirty-one. Yeah, I I'm think. at the ceiling at one twenty-one. Oh, wait, yeah, just... your ceiling's wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's one thirteen. I'm going back to look. Um. But yeah, we're also out of time. Uh, so oh. the bear suit Again. story ends it. Yeah, uh, yeah one thirteen. Sorry. Um, so yeah, hope you've enjoyed. Are you gonna? Uh, what, what's your plan? Be tell. I put you on the spot. You gonna play with us some more sometime? 
Uh, well, if people enjoy this, then yeah, I will play with you guys. I don't know. This is nice. This is a nice, relaxed time. What is it there to enjoy about hearing about a naked man in a bear suit going to the emergency department <laughs> at a convenience store? Uh, now I kind of want to just do it and see what they would say. Just show up at a convenience show store. Show up at a convenience store in a bear suit? Listen, guys, yeah. I need some help. I made it. <laughs> I made it. Hold on. I want to say, just in case we don't see him anymore, I can see beef. In person, quote unquote. Oh yeah, like I haven't even seen you. <laughs> oh, I made it. <laughs> nice, welcome back. It was great oh, playing okay. with you, B. It was. It was, While a good I was time. across the world. Oh, all right. Well, we'll see you guys later. All right, Bye -bye. guys. See ya.